we back with another episode of Wildlife Sports, man. We got Naomi Johnson today. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. So we gonna start off. Just explain your love for the game of basketball first. My love for the game? Yeah. Um, I started playing about third grade. I wasn't the greatest, you know. Uh, so... It was like, I think it was like our first game when I was little. We played, I didn't get in, and they kind of like pissed me off. Not pissed me off, but like, made me want to, you know, get good so then I could start playing and shit. So, you know, I walked up to my coach and was like, you know, what do I got to do to play? And she was like, you need to work harder. Like, I wasn't good. I'm not going to lie. Like, I can shoot. Uh... <laughs> My first two points, when I did get in my first two points, it was on the wrong basket. Like, I did that before. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So, it was like, I wasn't good. So, you know, I just walked to her. I was like, what do I got to play? What do I got to play? And she, you know, gave me a lift of things. So, like, when I would go to school, I'd come home after school, go in my basement at my mom's crib. You know, like, a con- it was just concrete down there. So, I'd go down there and dribble, do ball handling for, like, an hour. And then I'd go and shoot at my uncle gym that was up the street and just shoot and shoot like every day after practice, I would go up there and just live there type shit. So when I started doing that, uh, I could tell that I was getting better. I could tell that, you know, the way I was playing started to change. And then when I got to middle school, uh, that's really when I was like, okay, like, you know, maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. Like, so middle school, it was cool. Uh, I was probably, like, the best player on our team. I used to practice with the boys' team in middle school, so it was, like, I knew then, like, okay, like, like this is what I wanted to do. I, I knew then, like, that's what I wanted to do. But I knew when I first picked up the ball, I was, like, I wanted to do, like, I wanted to play basketball. I knew it right away, even though I wasn't good because it was something that I worked so hard at to get good at. Like, I feel like if I – if they didn't want to play basketball, I would never work so hard to get where I am now. So, For sure, for sure. What's the difference yeah. in your mind between a basketball player and a hooper? A basketball player and a hooper? And a hooper. Because when you a hooper, you different. Like, you different when you a hooper. Yeah, you different. I feel like hoopers have that dog mentality. Like, oh, I'm sitting like, ain't nobody scoring on me or I'm going to fuck up whoever in front of me type shit. Like, as far as a basketball player, you know, I feel like you just out there, you real, like, nonchalant. Not saying you not good, but it's just, like, you don't have that next step or next level, like, as far as a hooper. I just feel like hoopers just have that dog mentality, like LeBron. Like, he's just a dog. Like, everything he do is just a dog. Like, it's like, damn, like, so... I mean, that's what I would say. I mean, I really, I really feel like that's the only difference is just having that next level mindset that like you sitting on shit like that ain't nobody scoring on you or you finna fuck up everybody in front of you. They need to stop hating on LeBron too. Like, what else do he got to do? Like, yeah, like I ain't gonna lie, I really don't <laughs> like LeBron, but he's definitely one of the greatest like just by how he played he just played like a dog like i love lebron besides lebron my favorite player kevin garnett yeah i'm i'm really rocking with kyrie kyrie is definitely my my favorite player but lebron is a dog like he's just a hooper like he just fight out strong talented and then the mindset is just out of this world like i need that you to he tell just kyrie cold. stop tripping tell kyrie stop tripping <laughs> Yeah, he been, I don't know what he been on, but, like, Kyrie, that's really who I watched, like, growing up between AI and Kobe and who else? MJ, for real, but once I got, I think I once I got to high school is when he, really when I started watching Kyrie, like, damn near every day, and I still watch him now, just, like, YouTube clips and stuff like that. Oh, man. But... Yeah, LeBron hard. I don't know why people hate on him. I'm not going to say, like, that's my favorite player or I'm a fan of him. Like, I watch him, but he, he is, like, he's talented. And I don't know why people 
be hating like he not talented. Like he won't fuck up anybody that he played like. So. Like different. What separates you from every other uh, female hooper? I just feel like I've been through a lot of shit. Like not even personal life, but like injury wise. Like I feel like every injury I've been through just made my mindset stronger and made me want to work harder than anybody else. Like, my shoulder first came out when I was in the fourth grade. And, like, we talking about a dislocation. Like, I had to go to the hospital. They had to put me under to get that mug back in. So, it's like, experience that kind of pain at a young age just made me, make me want to work 10 times harder. Not saying that, you know, it wasn't, that that's not what set me apart, but it's just that right there just gave me the mentality that like I just got to work harder. And then if if somebody in front of me they not scoring, or well, I try my best not to let them score, but and then whoever guarding me can't guard me. It's just my mindset. Like every every game or every practice I go in, even if I feel like okay, yeah, that person they got more talent or more skill, like it's still in my mind that they not better than me. Like, mm-hmm. they can't get past me or I won't let them pass me or I won't let them score me. Even if I feel like, you know, they more talented than me, I still got to have that mindset because they just make me work harder. Like, especially in practice, I go with that mindset. It just makes me want to work harder. Like, I don't know. That's just, I don't know. And for anybody that's going to be watching this, them shoulder dislocations is serious. I had one at Robert Moore's when I was at Robert Moore's. Nah, for real. That shit and that's hurts. not, nah. That's not even. That's not even all of it. Like I don't know. I just feel like I'm injury prone. Like for real. Like in my shoulder, because you know, like once it come out, it'll keep coming out. I and could then be laying in the bed with I was, my arm like this, and then I move. Around that's what I'm saying. Out. Like it's, I it's, I feel, I definitely feel like it's the worst pain ever. Like I got like a million tattoos and piercings and shit, but that shit right there is just different. And then said, going into my junior year of high school, I told my ACL and lateral meniscus that set me out for a year. I couldn't do nothing. Like I couldn't use the bathroom by myself. I had to go to rehab. Rehab probably was the worst part because they was just forcing me to do shit, and I wasn't ready to do it, or I was still in pain, and the painkillers wasn't working. So I just feel like I just been through a lot of shit, like as far as injuries, and even now, like now. I'll go to practice now. Like, today I had practice this morning. You know, my Achilles hurting, my back hurting, but I'm still there, like, busting my ass. Like, I got tape all over me. So, it's just, I feel like... Looking like cold. My man. injuries, yeah, <laughs> like, in my injuries in the past just, just made me stronger, like, mentally. Like, like in practice today, I, I'm not going to lie, I really don't feel it until I get out of practice because it's like, it's not on my mind because I'm working so hard or I'm not trying to think about it. So... But once practice over, man. Hey, that's such a part for real though, because I know I don't have a lot of teammates that as soon as they go through an injury, it's over with. Like it's over with. It's that's what I'm saying. Over with. Cause people don't understand, like, especially when you in college too, like people don't understand like basketball is your job. So that means rehab yeah. is your job once you hurt. Yeah. So that means like you can't do nothing. Like you literally can do nothing yeah. but watch. Yeah. Like Yeah, that when I told my AC I was out for a year and that's Literally what I did, it killed me. I'm not going to lie. Just sitting out for a year watching everybody, you know, get better and shit. Now I feel like I'm behind. Now I feel like I got to work 10 times harder to get back up to where I was, which I had to because I had two surgeries. First surgery was cool. Second surgery, I had they had to go in and remove scar tissue because I just wasn't active, active enough in rehab. And part of that was on me. I was just – the pain was just too much. I didn't feel like pushing it, so – I had scar tissue built up, so they had to go in and remove that to get me back to rehab and shit. So it's just, I feel like from where I started to where I am now, it's just been a lot of a lot of stuff. And like my shoulder has came out probably like twelve times since then, but like now it came out so much that I just pop it in and keep yeah, going. Yeah, that's like, how I am now. Like it come out now, I just pop it back in. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Like I'm gonna scream and shit because it hurt, mm-hmm. but now. It done came out so many times now that I know how to pop it in and get back 
So I'll probably ice it for like 20 minutes and then get back on the court. So. And I remember doing rehab and the doctor told me like, look, I'm letting you know, there's no real way to stop your shoulder from popping out now that it's popped out one time. I'm like, Yeah, that's what they told me. Easily. And then I was going to get the surgery, but with the surgery, they were saying it's not 100% chance it's going to stay mm-hmm. in. So it's like, why am I wasting all this bread? And your shoulder only going to be like 70%. In. They was telling me the same yeah. thing. I was telling them like, I'm not having surgery. Like, yeah, I'm not doing that. If it's not going to fix it, I'm cool. For sure. So, so we've been seeing y'all, the women's side of St. Louis, get a lot of buckets at the little Louvre runs at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Explain like the talent in St. Louis. Like oh, on the man, female bro. side, because they the boys get a lot of credit. The girls don't get the credit on their side. And I was just talking to somebody about this, but actually I I'm kinda grateful they started doing it, especially like Tom and Hobbs and Kennedy over at Lutheran North. Mm-hmm. I feel like they got something going on with it now, but I think St. Louis females is just different, like should from Shug to Asia to Dark Skin Shug to Maddie to Nakia, Nafisa, like, I feel like St. Louis has really got some dogs and it really showed at the Lou Run. I mean, when I went, it was some females there that I ain't never seen before or never seen who before. And I'm like, damn, okay. Like, and most of them was down there in high school or graduated from the start of their freshman year in college. So it's like, like damn, like next generation type shit. So the Lou Run was cool. Uh, it was a lot of talent. You know, we was challenging each other, especially like Suge, because you know everybody knows Suge. Everybody <laughs> knows she could do. Yeah. She talented. You know, Suge is a dog for Shug real, but different. <laughs> different. You hear me? Way different. And me and Suge went out since Pampers. I met her through uh. Team with either shit. When we used to play them in AAU when I was younger, so I'm real close to her, her dad, her family. So, Shug just, Shug always been like that, though. It's just like a God given for her. Uh, but that don't mean she work hard, and that don't mean she be in the gym every day, because she do be in the gym every day, and it and it shows, you know? For sure. So. And for somebody that, like, I've interviewed Age, I interviewed Nafisa, like, it, it's, they different, like, they did. Nah, for real. <laughs> like, for sure, for sure. So now we're going to switch to high school. Like, playing at a powerhouse like Incarnate Word. See, I was at Normandy, so I'm right down the street. Yeah. Like, explain your experience in Incarnate Word. My experience at Incarnate Word, I really feel like I wouldn't say it prepared me for real life, but it prepared me for college and how college ball would look like. Uh, I knew when I was. It's crazy, though, because in middle school, Dan Roffers was my gym teacher, which is the head coach at Incarnate. So, you know, I would come up to him every day. I'm coming to Incarnate. I'm coming. Like, I don't care what I got to do. You know, I'm going to apply and all this and all that. And, you know, he would be like, he thought I was playing and things like that. But I really wasn't. I wanted to go to the best high school it was in St. Louis. And I kept telling my birthday, like, I don't want to go to East because, you know, where we live at, I would have been at Hazelwood East. Mm-hmm. That's not doing nothing for me. So I kept telling her I want to go to the best high school in St. Louis. And it was the same. There at Parkway North because Parkway North, they had Shook, uh, Maya Stova, who else they had. They had some dogs over there, too. I can't remember who was all on that team, though. Uh, but, yeah, it was between Parkway North and Carney. So I applied to Carney. Got in, went there, and I was excited. But as far as going to all girl private school, I wouldn't say it was challenging, but it was different for me. You know, waking up and seeing girls every day, that just was weird for me. But as far as the, the hooping perspective, Dan Roffers, I mean, he, he really got it in the bag. Like, he, even though it took me a while to figure out how to take what he was saying to me, not – in a, you know, mean way. Because, you know, in high school, I'm still young. I'm still learning. I'm still learning the rotations, the offense, the defense. And, you know, sometimes it just wouldn't make sense to me. But, you know, the way he would say it would come off as he being rude or being disrespectful. But in, in reality, he's just trying to help, you know. So 
And y'all was some uh, dogs. A, y'all, tell you, I remember nah, y'all played District real. that Norm. Did y'all have Sonya? I think the Faisal was her senior year. Yeah, y'all, y'all was going crazy. <laughs> going crazy, and high school was definitely. It was definitely one to remember, just because you know getting a chance to play with Nafisa and to play with Sonya and all them, and it just really like I know our team chemistry was different, and I I feel like that's why we would blow people out the water because our team chemistry was so tight. We were so close. We all knew what we was doing. We all had different parts that we had to bring into the game. So it's like when you got team chemistry and you got dogs at the same time, it's like who's going to stop that? Mm-hmm. So. Hey, y'all don't even know, but I remember, uh, like you said, you was at an all-girls school. So I was in Normandy, but I was in a choir, right? And we went to y'all yeah. school and we sung. And then our teacher made us do the all-boys, the all-boys choir. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and we saw that. And then when we came in the room, it was like girls in the hallway and the principal was like, they don't see boys a lot. They don't see boys a lot. Just relax. We really don't. <laughs> and it was weird. I'm not going to lie. Like, but you would think it will be a lot of drama. It wasn't. Like, it was not a lot of drama. It just it just was weird being around girls all day, every day of the week. Like, That's a lot of but, emotions. It's the same as, like I say, from Jason and Shamana. Like, it's a lot of emotions yeah, every day. A lot of emotions. Like. Like, was it ever a downside of being at the top program? Because I know, like, y'all get a lot of notoriety. People know about y'all all the time. Y'all get teams' best shots. Downsides? Uh, I mean, not that I can remember. I feel like, you know, everybody knew who Incarnate was. Everybody knew who they had. Um, But it was a lot of teams who didn't want to play us. I feel like. Uh, like Rafa's to try to get us on their schedule and they'll say no because they don't know the outcome. Mm-hmm. But I don't really think it was a downside. I mean, we knew we was the best program in St. Louis. We knew we had the best players. So, like, going into every game, we couldn't play like that, though. We had to play like, you know, it was a championship. We had to still work hard as we would if we was playing, you know, another top school in St. Louis or another top school and somewhere else. So, I don't know. I feel like and then even when we would go out of town and stuff, you know, playing people that we've never played before and never seen before, it still was a challenge, but we would still get the job done, you know? Hey, because y'all, the scores wasn't even close. <laughs> like Nah, for real. <laughs> like, y'all second year was all. getting in in the, in the second quarter. <laughs> yeah, at all. Uh, but it's, I mean, it all starts with practice. And Dan, he, I'm telling you, like, he's probably, he's probably the best coach I've had in my career just because he don't sugarcoat shit. Like, he'll give it to you straight up. Other coaches will feel like they being too, you know, mean or being too, you know, rude. But it's like, I need you to tell me, what you think, and I need to know what you think, and I need to know how to fix it, you know? Especially with him being and, a male coach. <laughs> yeah, and it was him. He definitely was that guy. Like, definitely was that guy. And it took me a minute to realize that it was nothing but love and nothing but help. But once I did realize it, it's over with. Like, I was snapping out of it, trying to get better, trying to fix everything. So, he's definitely, I would say, one of the best coaches I've had in my career just because of how hard he pushed us, how hard he was hard on us. You know, I feel like if he was a little, you know, back to days ago, we would have never did what we did. Mm-hmm. I mean, he wouldn't have as many championships as he would. So, yeah, he, he he's definitely that guy, though, for sure. For sure. Well, who's some of the girls in St. Louis who you feel like don't get enough credit? Even if yourself, you feel like people don't, you know, respect your game enough as they should. Oh, uh, man. Uh, I feel like, and I ain't going to lie, just like my little sister and I love her to death, but like Asia probably, even though, in high school, she did get a lot of credit. Mm-hmm. And at Mizzou, she's getting a lot of credit. But I feel, I ain't going to lie, like, I feel like she could play in the league. Like, I feel like 
she's there, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, just because how much of a dog she is, all the shit she been through, it shows, you know? Everything she done been through, she she literally leaves it all on the court. And that's probably why the number one reason why I love watching her, like, like again, like, that's like, like my little sister, not blood, but that's literally my sister, like, Blood don't even matter at this point. But when I watch her, you can tell, you know what I'm saying? You could tell she done been through a lot of shit because she's just a dog. Like, whoever in front of her, she taking you to the basket and one or at the free throw line. And if she guarding you, she's sitting on that shit. Like, it don't matter. Mm -hmm. And she talking so, to you. <laughs> man, she talking. And she talk her shit, too. And, you know, a lot of females... You want to see talk that shit like a lot of male hoopers still talk that shit, but Edge is gonna definitely talk her shit. Even if she, you know, even if you did squat her shit, still be like you're not gonna do it again, you know. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's probably the number one. And Shug, she definitely went to the league. She definitely played in the league, but she a dog too. And I, I don't feel think like Shug got as far as a shot as she should have. Yeah. Like. Mm, it was too quick to like to for her to go back overseas. It was too quick. She definitely should still be in the league. Quick. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So it really mm. blew me, shocked me for real because it's like she went so fast and then you know it was back to overseas. And I'm like, damn, what happened? You know, but she's definitely one of those. She she's definitely a bucket. She's definitely different, and I think Asia is different. So I think if Asia finish out her year in Mizzou and, you know, get stronger and faster. So she, she definitely going to be a problem, bro, like, for real. And it's like, crazy because, like, with her mama working in Normandy with us, she used to tell us, like, yeah, you had 20, but she had 30 and 15 last night. Like, yeah. Like, Miss Blackwell used to stay on it, like, stay on yeah. it for, on, for sure. Yeah. What kind of went into your decision to, to join Webster? Ah, man. I, um. Uh... My freshman year, I had went to Greenville. Mm -hmm. It's like this little school in Illinois. Really wasn't messing with the environment, wasn't messing with the the system. Didn't like the system for real. I didn't really feel like... Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, hold on. Somebody had just tried to call me. <laughs> uh, I wasn't really messing with the system. Like I didn't really feel like I could be myself there. Like, I feel like I had a lot of ties on me. Like, I couldn't do certain shit. So, I was like, nah, this this not it. So, it's crazy, though, because when we had played with stuff there, this is when I first seen uh, the head coach, Jordan, and, you know, I'm texting one of his players while he's standing right next to it. Because, you know, with D3, it's rare. Like, you can't really connect with coaches if you're on the team. So, mm -hmm. I'm sitting there texting her. She's sitting there telling him what I'm saying. I'm like, like, I want to come home at this point. And I knew I wanted to come home. I knew I wanted to stay home, but I didn't know where I wanted to go. And she was saying, you know, come here. You know, we got a spot for you. He'll love to have you, all this and all that. So I'm like, okay, cool. Went, uh, filled out a self release form, went on a visit. The practice was insane. Like, I walked in there, everybody lit, talking, you know, in Greenville, not saying it's bad and shit, but it was a Christian school, so it's like, you really couldn't do too much, like, and I need to, I need somebody, like, amped up on me for me to, like, all right, like, I'm going to get going. So that's how I felt, like, when I went to their practice, like, he was on them, like, he was yelling and cursing and, you know, getting them together and pushing them and stuff. I ain't had that where I was at. So that's like probably why the number one reason why I came here. But on top of that, just the coaching staff, like my coaching staff, <laughs> my, uh, people just keep trying to call me. It's buzzing and shit. My, uh, my coaches literally are like, I'm, I'm so close to my coaches. I probably been, I ain't never probably been close to a coach like this. Like even with Roth, I don't think we was this close. Like I, when I say I tell my coach everything, I tell my coach everything. Like, even if it's like a death or something I'm going through, he gonna know about it. And it's just a simple fact that it's more than basketball here. Like, they take the time to to really 
make sure we all right. Like if I'm sick, he'll come over, bring me stuff, or he'll call me every hour to make sure I'm good. Like it's just little shit like that. And I didn't have that where I was, obviously. Uh, and then as far as the school, the school real chill, real quiet. Um, it's not a lot of stuff we do on campus, but I kind of liked it as well because I'm a real stay in the house person anyway. I really don't go outside, but I think the environment here is just really what made it home and the coaching staff is what made it home. And then when I finally got here, my teammates made it home too. Like even now with the new team teammates I had, because, you know, most of them graduated, but even now we still a family, like, Everybody is just there for each other, and I didn't have that. So I feel like that's why I came here. It just felt home. I wanted to go somewhere where I could feel like I could play how I play and, you know, do what I do on the court. And, like, here I don't have no ties. If I want to shoot a three, I'm going to shoot it and not get pulled out. If I want to, you know, do this and do that, I can do it and not get pulled out. At my old school, I can do it. Like, if I did something, I'd probably get pulled out for doing it, even if I did make it type shit. So – it's just it's just little shit like that. Like her, I could I could play how I play and not have no problems with it. And my coach here literally tell me to shoot the ball if I'm not shooting it, or he'll tell me to do stuff if I'm not doing it. So it's probably why I came here for real, just the environment, the family vibes, and me being able to, to be me out there for real. And that's crazy because when my first year at William Penn, the Greenville coach just texted me like, look, we need to go. I think they had got like three injuries to guards like yeah. in a row. And he was like, hey, can't you, if you if you uh, sign your papers now, we can have you here by second semester. And some was just like, I'm not going to Greenville. Yeah. Then when I left with William Penn, Webster coach was calling me. He's like, come on, we got it. We got a roster. And I was like, I'm done with school. I'm not going back to school. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Boy. Over with. And but, Greenville boys, they they play they play weird. They play five in, five out, but it's like every thirty seconds. So it's like <laughs> you really don't get to do shit for real. See, he ain't tell me that. That would have so made fast. me mad. <laughs> you hear me? It's so fast. And the girls kinda play like that too when I was there. So it's like it's really you really don't got time to do nothing. Like you will get in your groove and boom, you right out. Like Yeah, that's too so. much. This episode of Wildlife Sports is sponsored by Unique K9, man. Go get your dogs trained, man. I know y'all tired of getting trained <laughs> by dogs. I got homeboys that work for FedEx. They tired of y'all dogs, man. The number going to be in the link in the description. Now, that's just crazy, though, because you went to, like, a real powerhouse. Like, a yeah, real, real powerhouse. Because I know when Normandy got yeah. uncredited, I was going to transfer to Madison Prep. But then Madison Prep got closed down. My mama didn't want me to go to Vashon because she was like, it's the same thing as Normandy. It's pointless. And I'm just like, yeah. but you went to a real powerhouse. Like, when y'all came, I remember my whole team was like, oh, we stand. We stand. They went about 50. They went about 50. Like, we was making bets yeah, on the game. Like, 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 no. Nah, like, I bet they went about 50. No, nah, they going to win about 30. No, nah, like, I remember y'all had a white girl that was yeah. a shooter. She was knocking everything down. Like, hell yeah. I'm like, they got, and y'all coach be chilling, though. Like, he be chilling. Yeah. Like, like, he don't do too much. He got the clean little cut. He going to chill. He going to have that white button-up shirt on. Yeah. And he going to play it cool. Like, I just always wanted to go to a powerhouse. Like, I kind of got that at William Penn a little bit, but I wanted to really yeah. go to a powerhouse. Like, Yeah, real powerhouse, yeah. For sure. But I appreciate you letting me interview you, for sure. Nah, for sure. I appreciate it. I know, for good. You know we locked in. We going to edit it. We going to